Hey everybody, I decided to try a live Facebook um, painting session because I've had so many people ask me questions about painting and things. And so I just kind of decided what the heck, why not, let's try a live one. So um, this is a flower door hanger that I have cut out out of wood and I primed it black just because I like um, the black background and how that looks. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, exactly kind of how I do my painting and, and what colors I'm using. And if you have any questions along the way, please um, feel free to just jump in and ask any, anything that you might have. So um, let me just check and see. Not sure if I can see posts or see um, people that are making comments right now, but let me look. Since this is the first time I've done this, I'm really not quite sure what I'm doing. I'll be right honest with you. But let me let me try to figure it out. So, all right. In the meantime, if I don't see your uh, questions and things, just bear with me. Um, and I can try to do that as I go. So, I am... Going to start out with a little bit of white. I'm not even using a palette. I don't even care about that. And I'm using turquoise and I'm using white. Both of these are just the Apple Barrel paints. They're really uh, quite, I wouldn't say cheap, but they're they're very reasonably priced. And as you can see, I am taking my blue and my turquoise and I am just basically my, or my turquoise and my white, I mean. And I am not even worrying about mixing it on a palette. I am just painting it right on the wood. I'm also gonna make sure to get my sides. I'm really big on wrapping color. I like to wrap my color when I paint stuff, so. There we go kind of waiting to see how long it's going to take for somebody to come downstairs and find me. I'm in my basement studio, and so I'm a little curious to see how long it's going to take before someone hunts me down and needs something. I am just going to get my base coat on here. And I just took and um, drew out the pattern I wanted on my wood. And if you are interested and you want uh, one of these cutouts, just let me know. I'm happy to, uh, happy to make you one and I'll send it to you. Um, it's about 15 bucks for just a, just a wood cutout. So, but it's all ready to go for you. And if you want it painted or primed black, you can let me know. Um, or if you want it just wood, just let me know that too. You can just send me a message actually and let me know. But you might be a better judge once you see the, once you see the finished project. So my bottom part here is a mason jar and it has water in it. And so I'm not really, really too concerned about one color um, blue for water because, you know, that's kind of boring. So um, I want to make sure that I have different colors going on. Oh, my friend Lori is on here. Thanks, Lori. She's liking it. Appreciate that. There we go. And my paint's still wet, so I'm not really too worried about it getting it just, just perfect. That's fine. 
Okay, so I am painting in the direction of my jar. I don't want it to be flat. So I am going to go in a kind of a curved motion. Um, you might choose to go more vertical if you want to, but I am going to go with this. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to let this dry just quick, just a little, just a little while. Um, it doesn't take very long at all. For the acrylic paint to dry. Um, that's kind of why I like acrylics. All right. I think that looks pretty good. Um, sometimes I use a hair dryer to get things to dry. And that works really well too. So there we go. We're done with the blue for now. And I am going to go in. I'm going to start the flowers. Um, so I am going to work on using some red and some white for the flowers. I'm actually going to turn this this way so that I'm not dragging my shirt across the whole uh, flowers and everything. I'm trying to read. I can't see what the what the comments are. Oh! Lori's all the way from Columbus, Ohio. That's right. She's in Columbus right now. So, that a girl. That a girl. She's a working girl in Columbus, Ohio right now. All right, so I don't have anything in this area for flowers, but I'm gonna make some flowers, and if you don't feel comfortable with just diving in and painting, you can um, draw them out first. I'm just gonna jump in, um, no fear, right? So I'm gonna try a little bit of white and a little bit of red, and of course when you mix a little bit of white and a little bit of red, you're going to get pink. So I'm going to be blending my colors out. I got a big old goober here and it's gross. All right, so I'm coming in here and I'm starting with just some kind of curved brush strokes for the petals. Of course, don't have to be perfect, and that's totally okay. Um, if it's not light enough or if it's too dark or too light, you can go back in with more color, which I will be doing later on. But I'm just going to first get my flowers kind of in there, and each one's gonna be a little bit different is totally okay. There we go. All right. Put some white over here because I know I'm going to bring some red back later. Now you may want to do this on a palette first if you don't feel comfortable. I use it just a paper plate um, just because it's easier sometimes to squeeze out your paint first like that. But each flower is different and they're going to overlap each other and that's cool too. We want that to happen. If uh, you have a part that doesn't quite cover the way you want it, I'm going to grab some of that red and bring it over here right away. See? How fun that is. You don't have to be, it does not have to be perfect at all, okay? That is the fun part about this. Anybody seriously can do this. You do not need to be a quote unquote artist. There is, you know, we're not working on gallery ready pieces here. And this is more about having fun than it is 
making something that's gallery art worthy. We're not worried about that. Who cares? Have fun. I hate it when people say, oh, I'm not an artist. Who cares? If you like to do something, you want to try something, just try it. Who cares? We're going to go back later and add a few details here and there, but for now, we're just kind of laying our flowers in and we'll go back and add details later. So there we go. Got some really cute little flowers going on here. I really like this a lot. Really a lot. Like I said, I'm kind of waiting to see if my children or my husband find me down here. My son was down here earlier, and I kind of, he was just kind of snooping around. And if you know my youngest son, Jack, he is an awesome, awesome kid. And he loves just snooping around and playing in this room, which is cool. But I will come down and I will try to find stuff that I want to use and I can't find it anywhere because it will be either moved or used or something. So he's cool kid though I love that guy he keeps me on my toes for sure keeps me on my toes <laughs> all right let's see I'm gonna, I'm gonna add just a little drip of white uh, drip of white drip of white on those Makes my areas a little bit lighter. A little more goober on my on my brush. There we go. do the same thing with the red. I'm going to go back and add a few little a few little spots that I want to be a little bit darker. And you have to be careful because when you're painting, if you start pushing your painting or your paint around too much, um, it's going to end up blending out and, and that's really that's kind of a hard thing to, you have to wait till it dries and then go back over it because it gets too, uh, too mixed. So you get like one color of pink and you don't really, you definitely don't want that. There we go. These are so cute, you guys. I love this couple parts that aren't blended enough for me you know that's the great thing is that you can do this to your own liking your own taste and um, I've been doing these with people for paint parties and they are so fun people get so excited about what they're doing it's so funny um, 
I did a, a painting party a while ago with a group of ladies and um, they just they they just had so much fun they were just a group that always gets together and does things every few months and uh, they decided to do a painting party and it was so funny because they just they were just having fun and they were drinking their wine and their cocktails and painting away and joking and laughing and um, the coolest part was is that seeing them do that we just realized that we just don't do that enough especially with girlfriends my friend Lori there that's on watching um, she and I have been best friends since seventh grade and so we know that we do not get together enough but we're so oh shoot we're both really um, busy with work and families and life and you know things get in the way but we really need to make time to do things like that so all right let's see I'm gonna go down and get a little bit of pink blopped on there like oops let me fix that there we go <laughs> so I'm done with my pink for right now and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add my green for my leaves. So I'm going to use just a little bit of a smaller brush. My other two brushes were kind of big. And so I'm going to take and I'm going to use some green. And I'm going to be kind of careful here. I want to kind of go around my pink flower. And if I end up going over it a little bit, that's all right. I can um, wait till it's dry. And go back over go back over everything with the pink if I want to it's not a big deal I do have uh, people order just the cutouts and then I put the paint together for them um, in a kit I can also do that for you too. All you gotta do is send me a message, um, depending on you know the cutout that we're doing and um, the amount of paint. All depends on how much it costs, but. I do do that, that is an option. certainly don't get to do this as often as I like but I'm going to start doing it more often because I know it's something that I need to do so and you can see that you just you can't mess this up you guys you can't there's no way you know there's so many different ways you can do this really I mean Flowers can look a little different. You could even do different color. You don't even need to do red flowers. You could do yellow or orange or whatever, blue, whatever you want. There you go. Come down here. I'm glad this is a leaf here. In there all it is is like a teardrop shape there we go um let's see I'm gonna just do a drop and a drop now I have to think about where I want my highlights and things because that's gonna kind of make a difference obviously where I want my white to go and again the, the greatest part about painting especially with acrylic paint is that if you don't like it you just go back and paint over it it's dry you can paint right over the top there's really no way you can make a mistake if you don't like something just fix it it's 
It's not a big deal. So you can kind of see that there's a line there. I'm going to fix that in a minute. There we go. harsh line there so I'm gonna fix that and do the same over here and there we go Oh, let's see. I'm going to add another part of a leaf down here, I think. Just a smaller, a little bit smaller one. Um, I think it's a little, a little wet yet. That's okay. We're just going to let that I'm going to draw it in there just so I can see where I want it. And then I'll go back later when it's a little drier to add the details to it. Okay. So normally I would just go and wash out my brushes just because they're kind of sitting there now and they're, they're getting a little bit, uh, probably a paint all over my face. Um, they're getting, they're just sitting there dirty. So um, I would normally go and wash those right away. But for now, since... We're on live on Facebook. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wait. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to start some of my details here with black. And the thing about black, you have to be careful that you don't use black on wet paint because otherwise you're going to get, it's going to get muddy. And you don't want muddy colors. That just turns into gray and brown. So you have to kind of be careful with that. But I am just gonna, I've got a real small brush here. And I'm just taking some black and I'm just adding some just adding some little details. to kind of frame out my flowers so you can see where they're coming from. Just like so. This one I think I'm gonna turn around a little bit more just because the paint on that one isn't quite defining so I'm gonna make it more defined with my black. Even though that one's a little bit thick I'm not too keen on that one, so I'm going to go back and fix that later. See, there's just, it just, adding that little bit of black, um, just kind of outlines things a little bit and just gives a little more detail. And some are really black, some are kind of gray. And it's great. I love it. Love, 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 love. Shake this up just a tiny, tiny bit. Yeah. 
is great, you guys. This is fun. Cannot make any mistakes. If you're up for doing a paint party, let me know. I'm happy to uh, come to you. I bring the cutouts, I bring the paint and all the supplies. You bring the people and provide the place. And I am there with the fun. back and that leave is really bothering me so I'm gonna go back and just fix that quick make that black line just a little bit thinner All right, so now I'm also going to turn this around so I can work back on the jar again. You can see the flowers in the jar. All right, I'm going to take this other brush here. Let's do some white first. I'm going to do a little bit of white. I'm actually going to go back up. I'm going to kiss some of these. Kiss some of those flowers with a little bit of white. Just give them a little bit of a highlight. Not a bunch, just a little bit. Um, you might ask why I am painting on a black uh, canvas or why I primed my canvas black. Sometimes I like um, painting on black just because it makes your colors look so much bolder. And then you have a, that black underneath that gives it just another whole dimension. Um, and it kind of adds shadows to it without having to add shadows to it. So sometimes I like playing with a black canvas or a black background on things. Um, it just gives it a little bit of a different look. So tonight I'm doing it on a black. I primed my, I primed my wood with a black flat paint, just spray paint. But you wouldn't have to, you wouldn't have to do that at all. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit of a highlight line down along the side. Kind of like so. And I'm also going to add it just along. Here. It's the top part of the jar there. I'm going to go back with my teal and my white. I'm going to make it lighter along the very bottom part here. Oops. I'm going 
gonna add just a just a tiny bit of white and take my teal and we're just gonna make this bottom part of the jar just a little bit lighter And I find myself experimenting a lot. I will do something and then I'll be like, yeah, I don't really like that. And then I'll go back and change my mind and try something else. And that's really the, the fun experimental part of, of art is that you can play around and try stuff. And if it doesn't work, you try something else. And that's what makes it so much fun. All right, let's see. I'm going to try this brush here. And I'm going to draw my mason jar lines here. All this is really just, you know, it just shows a little bit of motion, just gives it a little bit of interest. Um, you know, just gives it a little bit of fun. Like I said right here, I just kind of made a mistake and I'm just going to go back and paint right over it. Not a big deal at all. Alright, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a little bit of that teal and just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of black and I'm going to go on this side. make this side just a little bit dark. So in Wisconsin, it's kind of funny because this whole weekend, it was in the mid to high 50s and low 60s um, for temperatures, which some of you may think, oh my gosh, that is freezing. Uh, to us that are in the Midwest, that is actually a heat wave. Um, we have been below normal temperature. But the funniest part is, is that last week at this time, we were in the middle of a blizzard. I mean, literally, it was a blizzard. Um, we got about 18 inches of snow. People north of us got um, much more. And it was a mid-April 
snowstorm that kind of took everybody by surprise, um, which was kind of crazy. Lots of sports canceled, lots of spring sports. My daughter is chomping at the bit to go out and play soccer in a real, um, a real game because all of their soccer games have been canceled and it's just been torture on the, the teams and the coaches and I'm sure everybody because they haven't been able to play. Yeah, got a little pink in there. That's okay. That's okay. All right, so because I will be the first to admit that I am not super great at hand lettering, I'm going to use a pencil first because if I mess up, I can just paint over the top of it and nobody's going to ever know and it's not going to matter at all. Um, so I feel comfortable um, putting pencil first. Some of you may be awesome at um, lettering and you can do that or you can use a stencil too if you have a, t a stencil with words that you want to use across. I'm just going to put welcome across here. Uh, but I need to kind of think about what kind of letters I want to use. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll go on the computer and I will um, look up a font that I really, really like and then I will type out the, the word and then print it out for myself so that I, can, that I can put it on. But what I also like to do is I put the first letter and the last letter so that way I know exactly how much space I've got kind of a little trick I use um, to figure out how much space I need to do my lettering. Mm, not super, super happy with that. See? <laughs> See how easy it is? If you don't like it, just... Eh? Oh well. So let's see. I'm gonna go across here. I'm gonna make a little line just so I know. Alright, so I have wrote or written the word welcome. Let's see how we do with painting it, shall we? Always an adventure. So let's see, I'm gonna start with my E, I think. What I always find when I do lettering is I will start out with just the basic letter itself and then I will go back and I will play around with making it fun. So Let's see. Let's see how this goes. Get a little more paint in my lid here. I also find lettering goes a lot easier with paint that's um, a little thinner. Thick paint tends to drag and I don't like that very much. Now because we are doing this live, I am not waiting for everything to be perfect and dry. Normally I would, um, but because I want you guys to be able to see this while I'm doing this. I am uh, letting it be a little bit wet, but it's no big deal. There we 
go. There. All right, so now we got the base letter part in there. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna have some fun. I'm gonna start messing around with these letters, making some parts thick, some parts thin. And remember, if you, like I always say, guys, you can't mess this up. If you don't like it, paint over it once it's dry. Not a big deal. You know, if you are really super self-conscious about the lettering part, just print a font out, trace it onto your painting, get a stencil. Stencils are really pretty reasonable. You can get them anywhere, really, at Walmart, Michaels, Hobby Lobby, wherever, whatever craft place you have near you. on here too. So I'm just using about a quarter inch uh, thick press board type wood. Um, I have a roto zip that I use to cut it out. It actually worked pretty slick. Um, and then I just took my Dremel tool, which totally died on me while I was doing this, so I need a new one. Um, my Dremel tool and just sanded the sides and then I just took a hand sander and, and sanded along the straighter edges, so. That's one good way to get a new, uh, new power tool out of the deal, is to uh, <laughs> burn it out. Not that I meant to, but kinda happened. Mother's Day's coming though, right? So I'll need it before then. <laughs> we'll just pay it ahead. Looking really good, you guys. If I do say so myself. This is just so much fun. And again, I'm happy, happy, happy to come and do a door hanger painting party like this or a canvas painting party if you choose. I bring the supplies and everything we need and the instruction to do it. You just bring the people and have the place to do it. And then we just have a night of a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. And just do some really fun painting. I'll have to wait to put a hanger on this once it's totally dry, which I will post a picture of it when it's all done. I 
just want it to dry before I stick the wire through the top and kind of play with it. Let's see. What do I want to do here? I'm going to go in. Actually, I have a brush with white on it already. I'm going to go in with my brush and Put a little bit of a white side on this a little bit. I'm going to add a little dimension to it, I think, here. I'm going to go back and add black. This brush is not a great brush, so not really working with me. That's all right. All right. There we go. There, that's fun, perfect, I love it. Love, 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 love. So there we go, you guys. See it better there was that fun and that didn't really take us very long so again if you um, are looking to do a paint party at your house or you have a group um, that is willing to do it you can send me a message and I'm happy to quote you a price of how much um, it would cost and then what you would need to do so um, you can leave me a message here on the visual art Academy um, page and I am happy 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 to do a party with you so much fun there like I said when everything dries you can go back and add those little 
details and things that you feel like you missed or need to fix or whatever. You also need to know when to stop. I have trouble with that. There does come a time that you need to stop. Because I will over, overdo. And I do tend to do that a lot. So it's like, okay, you need to know when to stop, Brenda. Time to be done. All right. Done. Did I just say done? I think I did. All right, there. There. Perfect. Love it. Hope you guys had fun uh, watching and please leave me a message. Please share this with anybody that you think would enjoy it. Um, I'm happy if you have any questions, you know, send me a message too. I'm happy to answer questions for you as well. So, all right, thanks. And uh, that's it. We're done.